Hello, welcome everyone. Uh, today, uh, you're joining IEEE Turkey uh, webinar series, and we will have John Day, Director of IEEE Member Products and Programs, and we will talk about IEEE Colabertech and United IEEE Global Technical Community. That is, um, we really, uh, we're really pleased to have John Day today with us. And we will have also a question and answer section after John's presentation. And so you will be able to ask your questions um, to John and all of us. And I would like to uh, start with the welcome speech and introducing IEEE Turkey executive board members uh, before starting with John's presentation. And I would like to first welcome uh, our Turkey, IEEE Turkey section chair, Fatih Urda, and uh, later vi our vice chair, Tunçer Baykaş. Uh, Fatih Hocam. Hi there, my name is Fatih Urda. I'm uh, IEEE Turkey section chair. I feel really privileged to welcome John Day to our webinar today. Thank you, John, for coming. Uh, so he's going to talk about specifically IEEE Collaboratech, right? Yes. Simai? Yes. And, uh, so and I, I myself, I'm pretty uh, curious to find out about the details of Collaboratech. So I was looking into it. I had heard about it. So it looks like um, uh, it has many uh, aspects, has many dimensions. So we would be delighted to find out more about it. So I want to say a few words about IEEE. Uh, Turkey section. Uh, we like trace our history back to 80s. Uh, right now we are like 1500 members. We are proud to be part of Region 8, which is the largest region of IEEE with uh, over 60,000 members. And this executive board was elected, elected in January. So hopefully in the coming year and uh, longer, you're going to be organizing many activities like this and more. So, uh, handing it over to Tunjar Hoca. Yeah, hi. Uh, uh, I would like to welcome John one more time. And I'm actually a member of the Collaboratech. I used it before, but I know that there are always a new uh, features of the Collaboratech. And I would like to actually, before the start, I would like to maybe ask John that, like, maybe he can explain more about how the academia can benefit from Collaboratech because it was really, really one. And also I am the IEEE uh, Turkey site chair as well. So maybe what can the Collaboratech provide for the humanitarian activities of the IEEE as well. So welcome John again. Thank you. And um, thank you so much, John, uh, for joining us today. Uh, I would like to just remind the audience uh, all of you first, like this will be like interactive session at the sec second part when we do the question and answer, please uh, keep yourself muted and you can also close your video. But of course, when we move to the question sections, you will be able to ask your questions and turn on your video and I'll handle also your questions uh, to John. And this is Simaya Kar, I'm IEEE Turkey uh, section treasurer. Um, and I would like to welcome John for, uh, for the presentation. And here, the floor is yours, John, here. Okay, thank you. And we, do I need to reshare here? Yes. Resume share. Okay. Bear with me, I'm learn. I'm, uh, can you see it now? So it's, it, it's uh, you can try one more time. I think it's, uh, it's not here yet. It used to be here, but now. Okay. Well, very we good. Can see. I'll, I'll also mute myself uh, in case you need to just uh, need something. You can just let me know. I'll, come. I'll be back. Okay. Well, very good. Well, thank you very much for the kind introduction and the uh, invitation to join you today. Uh, by way of introduction, my name is John Day, and I want to thank the leadership of the Turkey Section for having me here today. It's uh, been a great pleasure uh, being involved with the IEEE. Uh, I've been with the IEEE now for uh, over 20 years in various capacities, and I've had the great opportunity to uh, experience the diversity of the organization, and perhaps the most rewarding aspect of this uh, tenure at IEEE has been to work with 
the fantastic members and volunteers of the organization uh, throughout the world, worldwide, to really experience the great diversity of, of the organization and the resources that not only the organization offers, but the resources that our members offer each other. And that, that perhaps in the end is the most valuable resource there is in the organization is the human network and the collective knowledge share that can be tapped uh, anytime at any hour to help uh, advance our aspirations, whether they're professional or personal, and to really make an impact for the world. So I'm gonna uh, walk through uh, several slides just to give you an update, an overview, a level set, if you may, of what Collaboratech is, and to spend a little time on some, some of the features that are exclusive to IEEE members, and then also spend some time about a very new and exciting initiative that kicked off this spring related to the IEEE Badge Challenge. And I think everyone uh, would, will enjoy this experience, the Badge Challenge. The feedback that we have received has been overwhelmingly positive. And I'll spend a little time on that, a little bit on the background, what's the goals, and then some of the impact that we've seen. For my update, I, I really have to uh, share the fact that I am here today really representing an extraordinary team. While I may be presenting this information to you, there is an extraordinary team behind this platform who have given a lot of time uh, on both the staff side as well as volunteers. And those volunteers range from the board of directors to a fantastic group of Collaboratech ambassadors and to our volunteers who have given us back important feedback on how to improve the platform. We spent considerable time on improvements last year and it was really due to the collective inputs of the users, the volunteers, the staff that has brought about a very different platform. If you've not logged in over the past couple of years, I would encourage you to do so. The feedback we receive most often for those who haven't logged in in the past couple of years is it's a very different platform and uh, for the better based on the collective feedback. My association with the organization is uh, quite diverse. I began in the Standards Association. I was a product manager and that's where I started. And then over time, I have expanded into various IEEE activities uh, with the student program, Women in Engineering, our Young Professionals program, launched uh, uh, IEEE TV, my IEEE, and then uh, one of the founding uh, principles in the launch of IEEE Collaboratech. I've also visited the great region, Region 8, and uh, had the great fortune to meet with the region leadership in Bucharest, Venice, Limassol, and then most recently uh, this past autumn in Valencia. So I've had the opportunity to work with uh, many of the volunteer leadership from IEEE Region 8. This has been a very difficult period uh, worldwide, uh, not only for the IEEE, but for everyone who is uh, enduring this COVID pa pandemic. And uh, my statement to you on behalf of the IEEE is we are committed and we have been committed to our members and our mission throughout this entire period. IEEE has remained open to the whole period. Uh, we had a very successful transition to remote working. And from my perspective, uh, from the operation side of IEEE is we haven't missed a beat. Uh, we have kept the organization up and going. Our members have remained active and, and most special is the volunteers who are on this call and the, uh, the mission and, and the responsibilities that they have felt during this time as your section leaders to keep activities going at a local level in the Turkey section despite all the hardships that this pandemic has caused. And this webinar series is, is an example of their commitment, the leadership's commitment of the IEEE Turkey section to you, the members. So I would like to applaud them uh, for their dedication and commitment to the members of Turkey. I'm gonna give you a high level of what Collaboratech is. It really is a, our IEEE's uh, initiative to bring together its entire global membership onto one platform and uh, provide them with the ability to network in a very special way and to collaborate around topics that are meaningful to them. 
It has many of the features, the common tool sets that you would find on other networks, the ability to connect, to join groups, to uh, create communities or belong to communities. Things that are very standard, you see these on other networks, uh, great networks that are up there. What we like to do here is to inflect the mission of IEEE in this platform. All that we stand for, uh, the great talent that's within the organization, and to connect knowledge and expertise from all over the world. Now, whether that's locally within your section or broad based across the IEEE Region 8 region or globally around the world. Uh, yesterday, I was given a similar talk to our members over in Hyderabad, India. And that's the great thing about this platform. And it's hard to believe that just five years ago, we couldn't do this, that we could have a, uh, a member from Turkey ask a question on a platform and then a verified member from India who could respond. So this is an incredible, uh, incredible opportunity for, as an organization that empowers our members to network within the IEEE network to join communities of interest to them. They can launch their own workspaces and then bring their friends in and to collaborate around a specific project. Many powerful features. And, and again, for the first time, the first platform that has brought together our community worldwide. Now, while we are a membership organization, uh, one of the features of Collaboratech is that non-members are welcome to join the platform. And uh, they can sign up for an account at no cost. And this provides a great way to introduce IEEE perhaps to your colleagues who do not belong to IEEE, but would like to experience what it has to offer. So by uh, signing up with an account, any non-member can sign up to the platform and have access to many of the features. Our members, however, have a premium experience and they have features that are exclusive to them. I'll outline those momentarily. As, if, as of this time, the network has about 225,000, actually it's closer to 230,000 now, and about 72,000 of them are actually members. So across the world, starting to bring our membership onto the platform, 70,000 so far are on the platform. Most recently, we've introduced uh, badging opportunities. And for the first time at this scale, we have the ability to recognize members for their participation and contributions uh, for micro participation, uh, for participating in conversations, for connecting with others. The platform offers the ability to badge and reward this participation. I'm often asked, what are the common use cases for Collaboratech? And uh, they are vast. Uh, different individuals have different needs. Uh, to the question I received at the beginning of the, of the uh, presentation, the question was, how might academia use Collaboratech? And academia could use Collaboratech by perhaps finding other researchers that share their technical interests. Uh, we have examples of academics who create workspaces, private workspaces on Collaboratech. She was writing her uh, final paper through the discovery process is humanitarian activity. That could be accomplished different. Uh, Um, hi everyone. I think we lost connection from John. So we are. Oh, he's back. back. John is back, but he's muted. He's I am muted. back. Okay. Awesome. All right. I hand over this. So John, your sound was coming and going. Do you agree other people? 
Yeah, I mean, last couple of minutes, your your sound was uh, was coming back and forth. So uh, maybe we can just repeat the last slide, and I'm well, just making your host again. Okay, your host. Okay. Can you see my slide, or do I need to reshare? Not yet. Uh, you may check it out. Reshare, maybe. Yes, please reshare. Okay, I need to. Zoom is not my first. Um, all I see is the icon on the on the top of the people. John, there is an icon. There should be an icon in the bottom, in the middle, share screen. Yeah, the green one. Green button. Yeah, I do not see that. Uh, okay. So, Simai, so, uh, maybe you could allow everybody to share screen. Um. Yeah. Sure. Actually, I already hand over the host rights to John Day. Um. So I need to, to get the host right back to take that one. But actually... So next time maybe you could uh, make everyone. our guest co-host. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily host. So John, can you make uh, Simai host or co-host? I think Click this version... on her picture. There are like three dots maybe. No, I, I'm not able to even see the uh, that menu. I'm sorry. Okay. Um. I, apparently, I'm connected. You can hear my voice. I just can't uh, see any of the uh, menu options. Okay, I reclaim the host. Actually, John, if you don't mind, I used to have your slides if you haven't revised them yet. Um, I can just like share if you're not able to do but it's i can help you to share your, yours as well okay that's fine if you have that sure i'm happy to do it that way as well okay sure um i think they're the same one that you emailed right yes all right okay just a second What I see right now is just a screen that says Zoom, and I can see the little talking icon, but that's all I can see at this point. Okay, actually, I'm sharing your slides right now. So which slide uh, you will continue with? Okay, so I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look at the slide deck that I have locally, and then I'll give a command uh, of when to go to the next slide. Okay. Um, okay. So right so now I'm looking at a slide four called <laughs> iCollect Collaboratech at a glance. Yes, it, there we are. Okay. Okay. So uh, as, as I was repeating before, I'm not sure uh, where my voice started to cut out, but there are many use cases for the platform. Uh, I was asked at the top of the, of the, uh, the webcast how academia might use Collaboratech. And uh, there are several ways of doing that, and we've had recent examples of where students have authored papers. Uh, they wanted to co-author papers, and what they did was they found experts on the platform who shared their technical interests. The students launched a private workspace on Collaboratech, invited those experts into the workspace, and they commenced working on a paper. So that's one case study uh, of how academics can use it. There are also other attached services that can be attached to the platform, uh, Zotero among many others. The other question I had was how humanitarian activities, those who have an interest in actually humanitarian activities might get involved. And there we have many examples. In fact, we have a community, I believe we have a few communities on Collaboratech with humanitarian activities. And a prime example is to go into one of those communities, 
select the participants tab and just find other people who have that interest and then connect with them directly. That's one example. Another example are committees, uh, local committees who are organizing efforts locally. We see those committees go in and they create a private workspace. They invite all other volunteers into that workspace and they use the workspace to coordinate their activities locally, whether it's file sharing or discussions. So those are a couple examples of, of how the platform is being used. Okay, could we go to the next slide, please? Called iTwee members from Europe, Middle East, and Africa are well represented. And Samay, if you can confirm when you get to that slide, I will continue. Uh, I'm at that slide, you can continue. Thank you. So what I'm sharing here is when we look at member participation uh, around the world, I've broken it out here by IEEE region. Now, for those who aren't familiar with the name, uh, the numbers associated with IEEE regions, I, region A, RA is IEEE region A. R0 is IEEE region 10. So IEEE region 10 is our Asia Pacific region, which is very active on Collaboratech. And I believe if anything, what this calls out is the great international diversity of participation on the platform. And this is a great accomplishment for the IEEE. You know, IEEE has been criticized for being a US-based organization and many of its activities are US-centric. I can assure you, if you go on to Collaboratech, uh, the majority of the participants on the platform are residents outside the United States. And this is the data behind that statement. If we look within Region 8, as far as the top sections that are participating, you can see Turkey is listed there. Uh, you are in the top 10. And I will share with you, it would not take much effort to push Turkey up on that list. Uh, what we find is if 10 or 15 members become very active on the platform, that can have a very profound uh, impact on uh, not only their participants, but others within the section who would like to get involved as well. So look at this as a snapshot in time and it's uh, based on data from the end of, uh, end of May. And, and I would encourage uh, members and the volunteers from the Turkey section, you could have direct impact on this, uh, whether it's participating in a batch challenge or participating in communities, it would not take much to uh, bring Turkey's uh, standing up in up the list here as presented here. So may I'd like to go to the next chart and that chart is uh, starts getting into the exclusive and premium services for IEEE members. And what, I, yes. what, what I'm going to do here is to walk you through a few slides that speak specifically to the premium services that are available to IEEE members uh, when they join IEEE. And one thing to remember with Collaboratech is it recognizes one status when you log into the platform. So when you log in, it will know if you're an IEEE member, if you're not an IEEE member. So the experience is different for IEEE members than it is for non-members. Uh, and, and these are some of the features that IEEE members have. I'm going to the next slide called verified status. Yes. And what we mean by this is really IEEE Collaboratech has the ability to verify one's IEEE status as well as their affiliations in the organization. And we're able to do this because of some very deep and real-time integrations with our back-end systems. Uh, it's amazing to watch this work. And there's many uh, badging and, and listings of data information about the members that's personalized to them. So for example, if you look at my profile to the right, you will see a blue diamond. And that blue diamond represents my senior member grade. Now, if you logged in as a student member, you would see a green diamond representing the greater student membership. And what Collaboratech will do is it will do this automatically, is when you have an elevation in grade from student to higher grade or member to senior member or senior member to fellow, this information will be automatically updated, uh, updated pretty much real time as soon as the information hits our backend databases. And, and that takes a great burden off our members that they do not have to maintain this information, it's done for them automatically. What we also have done is linked to your membership card uh, which is personalized to every member who logs in. Uh, certificates of membership that are available to them. I'll speak to that momentarily. As well as a very exciting feature and what we call my IEEE and providing every member who logs in 
a section gateway personalized to them. So as you can see in my profile, I'm, I reside in New Jersey and I belong to the Princeton Central New Jersey section. All of you over in Turkey, when you log in, it should say the IHPLE Turkey section. And what's great about this is it starts compiling and packaging in one location information from the section. I'll talk to that momentarily. Again, the profiles are automatically updated. They're verified uh, because it's integrated with our backend system. So you can depend on the information that you're seeing. You can trust that what you're seeing has been verified by the IEEE. I'm moving along to the next slide called uh, personalized connectivity. Uh, page number eight, yes. Yes, slide eight, thank you. So I wanna elaborate on that uh, My IEEE, that section gateway I spoke to before. You can find that right in the header and you select that My IEEE and it will open up this page that specifies the section you belong to. And it starts showcasing information, new members who have joined or opted into the member directory, events that are being sponsored by the section, a listing of volunteer officers, uh, activities that are happening, posting activity that is happening by members within the section. Uh, further on below, you can't see it in this screenshot, is badging, uh, badges that have been earned by members in the section, as well as uh, a list of other communities or workspaces that members from that section have joined. So this is a, a very tight and packaged presentment of the information. And then what we also do is provide a link from this gateway, and that's represented by the arrow, the box with a little arrow pointing out, and it will direct you right to the home page that's managed by the section. So that will take you over to the actual web page, the website that's managed by the section. Now, all of this information is, is, is available. It's uh, real time and it's able to be provisioned to every member in the organization. And if you can imagine being personalized to every member of the organization, it was quite the integration accomplishment to do that. So this will change. There are new members joining IEEE every day. So if they opt into the member directory, they, their name would appear here. And then right from that module, you can connect with them. You could message with them. That's all based on the individual member settings. Every member on Collaboratech controls whether or not they want to be messaged to, uh, as well as if they want to be connected to. Uh, we take the uh, privacy of the members very seriously, and we really empower them to control those features. I'm moving now to slide nine. One stop access. Yes. So I spoke before about the member directory. Uh, this is a very, very powerful resource for IEEE members. And we know from looking at some of the uh, usage statistics, it is the feature, one of the features that's most commonly used by our members. And, uh, and there's a good reason for that. It, first and foremost, is the most comprehensive and current directory of IEEE members. Uh, you will not find this on any other platform. It's been seamlessly integrated into Collaboratech. It is updated automatically as new members join the organization and it's fully GDPR compliant. And what I mean by that is every member decides when they join or, re or they renew their membership if they wanna be opted into the member directory. That's a personal choice of every member and they have that opportunity to make that selection when they join and when they renew their membership. Please to report that 80% of our IGP members participate in the member directory. Now again, this directory is only accessible to IEEE members. If you are a non-member logging into the platform, you would not have access to this. You would be able to search across other users of the platform who have a Collaboratech account, but you would not be able to access the member directory. So this is a very powerful feature for our members and it has very powerful filters. If you looked in the left-hand navigation, you will see some of those filters. So you can go in and you can filter on member grade. You could filter on uh, society affiliations. If you belong to a society in addition to IEEE, you can filter on members who belong to that society. Again, this is one of the most powerful features, bringing together the entire membership, uh, making that accessible from the palm of your hand, whether it's through uh, a mobile optimized version of the platform or from your desktop. I'm proceeding to slide 10. Yes. 
one of the great things we're able to do is personalize recommend, uh, recognition for our members. As a professional society, this is very important to us that we recognize the accomplishments of our members and their affiliation with the organization, be it IEEE or societies. And we've made it convenient for our members that if they go into their profile, they click the little icon of the photo, it'll bring up their profile. And right from uh, that profile, there's two options related to recognition. Certificates, which will list uh, your membership certificate or any society memberships you may belong to. And right from there, you can download the PDF and pop it right open and print it out. Or if you want to share it on social media, as many members do, you can do that as well. The latest edition, badges, and that's the tab right next to certificates. Uh, if our members or users have earned any badges, it'll automatically display them there. Our members can share their badges with each other on the platform or, or out to social media. So we've tried to make this very convenient to our members when they log in. And every year, uh, when once membership is uh, renewed, uh, if they add society memberships, those certificates will automatically update to the current membership year and be listed there. Proceeding to the next slide, slide 11. Merger. When we think about Collaboratech, the heart of Collaboratech is not only people, but the ability to interact, exchange with each other, and to uh, join communities, or even to launch uh, user workspaces. Every user on Collaboratech can create their own workspaces. And here, too, members have enhanced uh, privileges. If you look at the workspaces, members can have up to 30 workspaces, excuse me, up, uh, up to 30 workspaces, and each one of those workspaces can have up to 300 participants. Now, non-members can also have uh, launch workspaces, but as you can see here, their privileges are different. So when you become an IEEE member, the platform becomes much more powerful to you in that you can uh, have a number of workspaces. It could be for different projects. It could be for initiatives specific to IEEE, but you can see that the privileges are much more expanded. There are members only uh, communities on Collaboratech. Uh, the membership forum I've, I've listed there, as well as a few others. If you belong to an IEEE society, there's a community called the All, All Society Tech Forum and access to that will be uh, governed by whether or not you are a society member. Proceeding to slide 12. Opportunity of membership and uh, mentoring partnerships. Yes. Uh, through Collaboratech, we've had the ability to integrate mentoring. Uh, you know, once we, we get all of our people in one location, uh, great things start happening. And so what we've done with Collaboratech is give our members the ability to either become a mentor or they can seek mentors. And this is done through profile settings. Uh, if, you're, if you would like to be a mentor, you can go to your preference settings on Collaboratech and basically activate your mentor preferences. And there, there's a drop down menu where you can select uh, on what topics you would like to mentor, uh, who, would you, who you would like to mentor, language preferences, etc. And as soon as you activate your mentor preferences, you will automatically be discoverable from the sub tab called IEEE Mentors. And you can see the yellow highlight there. So if you want to find mentors on the platform, you simply navigate to the people area and you'll see a sub tab called Mentors. You're able to filter on those mentors by the criteria that you see in the left-hand navigation. And that will give you, uh, give you an overview of the number of mentors that are in there. And if you'd like to become a mentor, again, you go to your preference, center, preference settings to activate your, your mentor preferences. So again, we're using the same platform to uh, not only bring people together, but to match those who have an interest in becoming a mentor, as well as those who have an interest in seeking mentors. I've moved now to uh, slide 13. Okay. Um, I truly back challenge. Correct. I mentioned at the top of the, uh, the presentation that one of the, the most exciting things that we've launched with Labortech is the ability to recognize and credential participation with IEEE at the micro level. Uh, and this is a fantastic capability to um, reward those who contribute uh, to discussions, who make connections through the organization, 
and, and really to recognize the fact that they are contributing and participating in the professional society. And it may be a, a level of participation that may not be at the volunteer level or a volunteer officer level, but their participation is, is vitally important to IEEE as a professional society, and, and we would like to recognize that. So uh, I'll spend a couple slides just giving you an overview of what this badge challenge that we launched uh, this year is about and where the status of where we are right now, as well as a couple slides on how you can get involved. So if I proceed to slide 14. Mm -hmm. Yes. Excuse me as I take a drink. We launched the badge challenge uh, in April. Now, as you might imagine, that was a precarious time to launch anything <laughs> around the world. Uh, but this challenge had been in the planning for six months. And it has, uh, as you might imagine, it's very sophisticated to launch uh, this capability and, and then to, uh, to do it in the midst of a global pandemic, not only a global pandemic, but to also do it when your entire team is remote working. So uh, this was quite the, the feat, and, I, and I'm very proud. I, I'm very proud of the entire team who really stood up. They took this challenge, and especially our volunteers. We, we have a phenomenal group of ambassadors for the Collaborative Program. Uh, many of them are located in Asia Pacific, but we always welcome more from other parts of the world. And we made the decision that despite uh, the challenge that we were all being that we were all beginning to face in April with the pandemic, that we would go forward with this. And, and what we found was not only did it have um, the ability to recognize participation, but what we also found it was serving a, a, another very important role. And it was playing the role of inspiring our members during some difficult times to uh, stay connected, to uh, participate, and, and just the excitement of being recognized and rewarded uh, the congratulations and the affirmations of colleagues when they won the challenge. So it's had a, a very motivational impact on the organization in launching this. Now, you know, certainly that was not envisioned when we, the pandemic wasn't envisioned when we first launched this, uh, but it's been very gratifying to see the uplifting uh, aspect of this initiative on the members and our volunteers who are participating. So the time frames laid out, we, we decided to extend this challenge for the entirety of 2020. And we did that to provide the most flexibility possible for those who are enduring hardship during the pandemic. So we really stretched it out to last the entire year. So despite the challenges that our members are facing, that they would have an opportunity to participate uh, at a more leisurely pace. The time frame again, all of 2020, uh, the rewards, we have random drawings uh, for those who are in the badges and for those who participate in the uh, leaderboard challenge. And I'll spend a couple of slides to speak to that. If we could move to the next slide, please, Samay, slide 15. Yes, we are at slide 15. Okay. Well, if you have never participated in a, a badge challenge, uh, it's really a journey. Uh, and I know Samay started it. Samay checked it out uh, when we first launched it. And the way we structured the badge challenge uh, through Collaboratech is to, to perform a series of tasks. And we've mixed in some math challenges. We have mixed in joining communities and uh, participating in discussions. We've mixed in connecting with other people. And, and when a user starts embarks upon this journey, they are guided by clues. And the clues will tell them what to do next. And uh, we've had many people describe it as a treasure hunt. Uh, you begin, you start down the path, and then the clues will tell you where you need to go next. And in, in, there's been a tremendous excitement. Uh, the members and the non-members who participate are tremendously gratified when they get through the whole journey. Uh, once they complete the journey, that badge will automatically appear. It will congratulate them. They've won the badge, and it automatically shows up on their profile. So when we launched the first badge, and it was the first one to discover, uh, we had over 600 recipients of, of that badge. And uh, that badge concluded the 12th of June. However, there's a leaderboard challenge that's underway that uh, started right after the Discover badge. So uh, there's still ways to participate in the challenge. And we will likely come back and reintroduce the Discover badge toward the end of the year. We recognize that uh, not everyone was able to participate. 
so that we're so that we're investigating options right now that we might bring it back at the end of the year after the other badges are made available. I'm going to the next slide called slide 16. Okay, yes, we are there. Yes. And as a result of the badge challenge, one of the great things that we've seen is the incredible participation of student members. Uh, the student members have been uh, very involved with the challenge, and, and it certainly shows right here. So as more members start participating in the badge challenge, it tilted very heavily toward our student members, and, and that's reflected in uh, this comparative stats. So student members were very active in May. In fact, they drove a lot of the participation and not only participate in the badge challenge, but they also utilized other services from the platform. Moving to slide uh, 17. Um, response. Yes. I'm sharing a few uh, testimonials from those who participated in the challenge here. Uh, the overriding theme was, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about IEEE. Uh, I was really amazed about the amount of information I was able to find amazed by the, the people I was able to find. So what was very gratifying for us was the amount of value this had for the participant, that they truly enjoyed the experience of participating in the badge challenge. And, and they met individuals that they would not have met before had they not participated in the challenge. So that's a great testament to IEEE as a professional society that we're able to bring this to our individuals, uh, connect them with other individuals who through the normal day of life they may not have met. I'm moving on to slide 18. In summary? Yes. So slide 19, I'll wrap it up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So when you look at Collaboratech, uh, just to reiterate, it's really the only platform that unites our global community, our global technical community, brings it together under one convenient hub uh, not only introduces the great people of IEEE, but also the great opportunities and, and resources that are available. I won't read them all, but there's a quick summary list of all the exclusive premium level services that IEEE members have for being an IEEE member. Uh, and if a non-member on the platform joins, uh, these services will be automatically uh, provisioned to them so that when they log in again, they will see all of these services. And then more recently, the badge and opportunities uh, allow us to recognize the great contributions uh, of our members and our, our volunteers for their participation and contributions on the platform. My last slide is the next slide, slide 20. All right. Okay, so there is additional support. We have a, a very uh, detailed user guide uh, that's updated when new features come out. Uh, the URL is listed there. We have uh, some staff on hand that can support you with your questions. I've listed them there. Natalie and Victor work out of the Piscataway option, uh, out of the uh, Piscataway office, excuse me, and Ewell works out of Singapore. We have several volunteer ambassadors um, from India, but we also have them from Latin America as well. And if you have an interest in becoming an ambassador for Collaboratech, uh, feel free to outreach to either Sime or to me, and we can provide you with more information. We will likely be looking at recruiting new ambassadors in the fourth quarter timeframe. So there will be additional announcements about that coming forward. So Sime, I will go to slide 21 and that concludes my talk. Okay. All right, so um, I'll just start my video. Shall I stop the sharing? Yes, I mean, I, I cannot see anything. So I, you're okay. going to have to help me as far as um, any comments that we might have. Sure. So uh, actually, I stopped sharing the video already, uh, the slides, your slides already. So we can move forward with the questions. Okay. So. Yeah, so far I didn't receive any questions yet. Uh, I would like to just ask if there is any question, I can welcome your questions one by one and happy to forward. You can type on the chat or you can just raise um, your hand and I can give you um, give your voice and, and you can just continue with your question and ask to John directly. 
Um, and, it's, and it's perfectly okay. If you don't have any questions now, uh, that was a lot of information to absorb in a short period. Uh, certainly, if you don't have any questions now, and if they come to you after, I'd be more than happy to answer them as well. Let me ask, uh, I checked one thing that like, is there an application for the Collaboratech at the moment or it's only web-based? Because I know that there is an IEEE application, but I'm not sure if they are connected with the Collaboratech. Yes, what we have right now is uh, Collaboratech is fully web optimized. Um, the, it's for HTML. It's, uh, if you, uh, we have an HTML, uh, web mobile version of the platform. It's formatted for mobile. So if you use your web browser and went to Collaboratech, it would automatically appear. Uh, to your point, there is an IEEE app. And from that app, uh, Collaboratech is listed in there as one of the services. And then if you were to click that, it would take you directly to the mobile responsive site of Collaboratech. Thank you. Um, Father John, you're muted. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Can I go ahead? Yes, sure. Please go ahead. Um, John, did we let the recruiters in to Collaboratech? Uh, I think if they uh, knew about it, and I'm sure quite a few of them know about it, they would like to get there. Yes, great question. Great question. We actually have a recruiter interface for Collaboratech. We haven't rolled that out yet. Uh, right now, our focus last year was improving the usability of the platform based on all the feedback we received. So that was our focus last year. Uh, but coming forward to this year, we will likely start looking at that possibility in the fourth quarter. Uh, to provide recruiters with a special interface. And uh, to your point, it, it provides opportunities for our members to be discovered by those seeking qualified, you know, qualified talent. Right, okay, thanks. I have more questions, but then I wanna also let other people um, ask questions. We can, um, we can go ahead with, uh, with your questions, meanwhile, because we are still expecting more people uh, to raise their hand to, to take take this uh, right back, or just like you can just continue with your questions. Okay. So speaking of recruiting people, uh, professors also like to recruit people, especially uh, PhD students, right? Mm -hmm. Research assistants. Uh, there are few websites that address this problem, but I think IEEE and Collaboratech, again, would be a great uh, medium for this. That's a great UAB. suggestion. That's a great suggestion. I, I would look forward to um, speaking with you more about that offline, um, what, what, how you might envision that working. I right. think it's a, and, it's a yeah. great opportunity. Right. And you could charge a certain amount for that, but then if the professor is an IEEE member, or especially an elevated member, maybe there could be a discount, free services. Yeah, that, that is something that we, we would want to explore you know, in, its, in its totality, but certainly the concept is, is intriguing and uh, one that very worthwhile exploring. I'd be happy to do that offline. I have definitely more questions, but like I said, I can take a breath and <laughs> see sure. if there are questions from other Let me check members the chat. of the audience. We haven't received any other question yet, so um, and just again a little kind of reminder for everyone: you can raise your hand, or you can just like go, turn on your video and ask a question directly by uh, writing down the chat, I will give you a floor. So if you don't mind, we will continue with our section chair, uh, chair's questions. Uh, I think we can go ahead. We can continue. Okay. And another idea, John, uh, uh, more than a question, it's an idea. Uh, speaking of badges, the first, when I heard the word badge, the first thing that comes into my mind is our conference badges. Uh, so, conferences are very important for IEEE in many ways, right? Mm -hmm. 
So if IEEE kept track of the IEEE sponsored conferences people attended. So if we had these conference badges on IEEE collaborating, displayed. Yes, a great suggestion. Uh, that certainly would require a, a high, highly um, integrated approach to ensuring that we have in one location all those who attend IEEE conferences. I'm not sure where the organization is with that yet, but to the extent that if that information could be consolidated, then it would not take much additional effort to then recognize an individual for their attendance. I think the initial hurdle there is, is whether or not all of that registration uh, information is, is located and access easily accessible. Right, right, definitely, you're right. One thing that easily accessible, I want to go on top of that, and John knows that one as well, the Standards Association. And if you are voting for a sponsor ballot in the Standards Association, usually you are, you are a member and your number and everything is with IEEE inside the Standards Association. So similar to the conferences, maybe the standards experts actually can show their badges and people can actually find them if you have a question regarding a, uh, an engineering in biomedical sciences standards and so on, it would be so easy to find them in Colobatech. So that could be added. Yeah, if I recall correctly, um, from the membership directory, if you belong to the Standards Association, I will have to check to see if that membership is listed. So if you went to the membership directory and there's a filter on the side called memberships and affiliations, if you belong to the Standards Association, I'll have to check, and you could probably do it quicker than I can, to see if there's a filter option for the Standards Association. And then if there is, you can filter that against the uh, other categories there and, and could find individuals who belong to the Standards Association, but also have perhaps a society membership, which would indicate their technical expertise. John, actually, I have one question. Maybe it's a, it's a good um, time to just like remind everyone. So is it possible for sections or working groups to create their own workspace in Colabertech for? Yes. In fact, we have several sections that do that. One that comes to mind is the IEEE Houston section. Uh, they have created a, their own workspace. When you create a workspace on Colabertech, you have several options. You, can, you have the option of whether it will be publicly visible or uh, private. You have the option of how individuals can join the workspace, if they can, if it must be invitation only, or if they can ask to join. That, that all, those configurations are all set up when you create the workspace. Uh, the Houston section uses Collaboratech for that reason. Uh, they use it to help organize their communications, share files uh, that are common that need to be used uh, by the volunteers. Uh, the files and folders capability within the workspaces have been tremendously upgraded over the past six months and really allow a flexibility, which is important for our volunteers to just from a knowledge transfer uh, from one set of leadership to another, that there's a repository and that institutional knowledge that it can be located in one area. And so that when new leadership comes on board, uh, they have access to that as well. So that is, that is a, a typical case study. Uh, and I know of several sections, particularly the Houston section in Texas that does that. Okay, thank you for clarification. And um, here, I think we have no more questions so far. Is there any other question we can welcome now? I have more questions. <laughs> of course, sure. Where is yours? Uh, John, so would you say Colaboratech is in direct or indirect competition with LinkedIn? No. Because complimentary the, or I'd say, com I'd, say, I'd, I'd say complimentary because the, the, the focus of Colaboratech is around our membership. This is our community. And, um, and that's, there's certainly overlap in participation and, and rightfully so. LinkedIn's a fantastic service. Uh, but this really focuses on IEEE as a professional society. This is our community, our network, and providing our members the ability to find each other based on their membership status uh, with the knowledge that, the trusted knowledge that I should verify status of individuals that are members. 
uh, as well as introducing to the many different aspects of IEEE grade elevation that's unique to the organization, uh, the enhanced collaboration privileges that our members receive, uh, the certificates of IEEE membership. These are very unique to our culture and our organization. So in the end, I, I, believe, that, I, I believe they're complementary. Okay. Okay, thanks. So I have actually two more questions, but they are not within the scope of Collaboratech possibly, but um, I think they are within your mission and responsibilities within IEEE, but again, I can take a breath and see if other people have questions. Let me just ask if there is anyone. Uh, we, I, I'm seeing no hands raised, so we can continue with your questions. Uh, in one of your uh, earlier slides, I saw something about IEEE Extreme Expansion. Yes. So I know what IEEE Extreme is, but IEEE Extreme Expansion, Sure. I never heard of that, it before. Yes, if I recall correctly, that was in my biography slide. Uh, as far as the various activities I've been involved with, uh, with IEEE, and I was uh, significantly involved in the early days uh, with IEEE Extreme. Uh, after it had been running for about three years is when I came into MGA and really worked with the teams to, to really build that up uh, into a next level competition, you know, through marketing, through uh, the introduction of ambassadors. So that, that's the context for that expansion. Uh, we took a, you know, a competition that was relatively small at the time, this is over a decade ago, and really expanded it in such a way that it really is a premier signature event of IEEE. It happens uh, every year. There is also an IEEE Extreme community on Collaboratech, and uh, updates are posted there, as well as uh, other individuals who are interested in the competition. I just referring to your bio, like I would like to add something, you know, like I've seen several initiatives and thank you for everything you do, John. Oh, and, you're welcome. and also um, when I was at Triple E, the global team lead. So I, uh, your support was so important. So I think I need to add and highlight that you also um, contribute a lot to our I Triple E initiative in addition to all of these that you wrote. Well, thank you. It's, it's a great pleasure. It's, it's, it's a great pleasure to be involved with these initiatives. Um, they truly do make an impact uh, and they unite us as an organization. So uh, throughout this whole uh, period of involvement with Collaboratech, I, I, what I'm realizing is a lot of old themes are coming front and center. And the ability to bring the organization together to benefit from each other's counsel and advice is a uh, true to the mission of the organization and all that we have to offer to each other. Thank you so much. Fatih or John, uh, you were going to ask another question, I think. Yeah, one Thank last you. question. Uh, so did this ever come up, uh, the following idea? Um, so if I want to organize a conference, uh, one of the first things is I need to set up a website even when we organize conferences, if you're not doing them one year after another year, like, I mean, I organize conferences, but uh, there's like five or six years uh, time lapse between them. And uh, although a lot of people would think that setting up a website is pretty trivial, it takes a lot of time. Would I triply be interested in offering that infrastructure for people who want to organize I triply sponsored conferences like think of the uh, website version of web hosting version of easy chair great suggestion that one's a little bit outside of my scope of focus uh at the ieee but certainly a a suggestion that should be brought forward to those in the conferences area of ieee the panel of conference organizers perhaps would be a venue uh where such a suggestion should be brought forward say it again panel of what Conference organizers, the IEEE panel of conference organizers. Uh, that's a organization that, uh, true to their name, they, they are involved with organizing conferences. Uh, that would be one venue to bring that suggestion forward. And then certainly there's the technical activity staff in the conferences area. 
that would be another venue where such a suggestion should be brought forward. Okay, I made a note of it. Thank you. So that concludes my questions. Thank you for all the, the feedback and the questions. Um, I would like to just make a last call if there is any question to address um, before we summarize and, and close the session. Let me have a look. I think, as you said, John, there are a lot of information. <laughs> so for, for all of us, so then we, uh, it was very informative and, and um, we all we all learn uh, even more than even we use uh, Colorotech. They're always like it's it's a it's a large um, tool and it's actually an opportunity for I to believe volunteers and members. So I think also um, many of us learn during your presentation. So thank you so much for sharing your time with us and all the information. You're very welcome. You're very welcome, and I thank you all for your hospitality and for inviting me. And hopefully someday we'll see each other in person. You look forward Hopefully. those days. Yes, Hopefully. yes we I do. Will, uh, for the last words, I would like to also, um, you know, just like call Tunchar Baikash and Fati Urda for the, for the closing. I would like to thank you one more time. And as the Turkey section, we will uh, hope to increase the number of Collaborative members from our section. So thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thank you. John, thank you. Thank you for being here and thank you for all your efforts in IEEE. You're welcome. Thank you. We really appreciate um, your participation to our IEEE Turkey section uh, webinar, John. And we hope to see you uh, soon one day in person or in another online event even sooner. Absolutely. Anytime. Uh, I'd be more than happy to come back. Uh, the great thing about uh, the tracking of trending on Collaboratech, as you can see the snapshot of where we are now. And uh, with a little bit of mobilization, you can see your progress perhaps in one or two months. Awesome. And we look forward to that uh, bad challenge to come back. So we'll probably have more involvement from my Triple E Turkey section. Absolutely. And, and this is one thing I did want to, I, I was remiss in mentioning. Uh, for those who want to learn more about the badge challenge, uh, the best place you can go is to join the IEEE Badge Hub community. It's called the IEEE Badge Hub community. It's on Collaboratech. And that's the best place to go to learn about what's happening. Uh, there's a challenge underway right now, by the way. Even though the, the Discover Badge closed down, we have what's called the uh, Discover Challenge leaderboard, where just through participating on the platform, uh, you can get listed on a leaderboard. So. That leaderboard will be in place until about the August time frame when we launch the Connect Batch. That's really good to know. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you everyone for watching. So hope to see you another uh, time in the next upcoming uh, meetings and webinars. Okay, goodbye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Goodbye. Thanks, you, Have a good Thanks, day. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you.